He was going to speak a little more. So the title is AI and Future Civilization. First, how has AI progressed and what is its future? I'd like to introduce to you my views. Uh, Mr. Yaka is talking about neuroscience and computing AI. And the history was also introduced. Within AI, I'd like to talk about the so-called grand challenge, how this contributed to the development of, a of AIs. In AIs, what is the grand challenge uh, to try to resolve the challenging issues with one of the main powers that promote, as you know, chess? Ever since computers were built, if computers can have intelligence, then it may be possible to win humans in chess games. At first, it took a lot of time to do that. But as you know, in 1997, IBM's Deep Blue won against Gary Kasparov in chess game, and we reached the conclusion. And in studies of chess, there are many uh, algorithms and uh, mechanical machine study or parallel c computation algorithms. And one example are the ones used in car navigation. But that's no longer called AI because it's used uh, so broadly. And in Japan, there's computer shogi chess, which won matches consecutively. And people said Mr. Habu would be chessing, but there was uh, the alpha go that attracted more attention. And people wonder what happened to shogi games. But as you know, in go games, alpha go won. So its ability is now well known. There are many developments as a background for that. And IBM, after Deep Blue, Watson system was developed, and the quiz show Jeopardy is a challenge and won against a human ch champion. So those were some of the uh, challenges that was resolved. This is an issue of complete information. All the issues to be resolved is in front. In case of Jeopardy, that is a quiz. Uh, so you cannot find the answer in front of you. But if you search for the answer, you can find the answer. How this was solved, this is based on large-scale data, large-scale co computation, and advanced machine learning. In case of chess and Go, with only computation and volume of data, people thought uh, computers would not be able to win. But a lot of computation was made, and there was development of machine learning. And by doing good machine learning, they could find the an answer. That is the history of AI. And in working with AI, we thought chess uh, AI would be able to win. So what to do next? In 20 or 30 years, what is a grand challenge? And this was thought in the 1990s. And from 2020 to 2030, with AIs and robotics, what social issues would be hot issues that was anticipated, like autonomous driving? It was called ITS, or disaster rescue or uh, caretaking robotics or logistics service robots. In the 1990s, if you, what would be hot topics in 2020 to 2030? And what are the issues? And what kind of vehicles would be necessary? So not all information is available. And there's also noise included in information. There is no right answer. So that became a big issue. And to realize this. Uh, autonomous agents in the real world, real time, and distributed system, and inc incomplete, inaccurate, and noisy information should be processed. Then what sh should be done for all the researchers in the road to be able to research that? What is necessary? That was RoboCup. Until 1950s, the challenge was to build a team of fully autonomous humanoid which can win the championship under FIFA. Maybe the Japanese now national football team is weak, so maybe robotics may be able to win. 
but football is important. But in that process, technologies developed in that process will change the society. That is a purpose. But football includes all the necessary factors that I mentioned. If you compare, in case of chess, chess is very static. You have to move. And also, central control is necessary, and sensor uh, readings is, is symbolic. Information stability is complete. But for Robo Cup, it is dynamic and uh, real time. And under incomplete information, it is possible to conduct distributed processing. And what is the task necessary to do that? Then uh, we thought that football would be answered. And also disaster relief, or in case of caregiving, the situation would be different from country to country, depending on the environment. So for everyone to be able to work together would be difficult. So in case of games and sports, which is not a real issue, we thought football would be the good. If to say that robots will win the FIFA World Cup games, you know what you're aiming for. And that is important that everyone can understand what you're aiming for. And all researchers in the world started to show interest. The purpose was in 50 years from uh, Wright uh, Brothers to Moon Landing took 40 to 50 years, for ENIAC Deep Blue took 50 years, for Double Helix to Human Genome, Genome Project 50 years. So our target is to achieve this in 15 years. And we tried. In 1990s, we said we would do in 1995, and now in 1997, the first RoboCup was held. Let me show you the video. You can see the game. The one is the AISD's robot which is not moving. This is a Robo World Cup, so NHK, BBC, CNN broadcast. And CNN reporter said, when is the game starting? That question was asked. Well, it started actually five minutes ago. That's what actually happened. In the following year, NHK had a special coverage. And that was the first game. So it's very important to remember this. And what happened in 2014? So to decide a pass course, and this is not remotely controlled. You may think that they are remotely controlled, but the robots make team work by themselves and make the plan by themselves. And from beginning until the end, humans are not touching the robots. They are autonomous robots for football. So with this speed, the technology is progressing. And initially, people thought we should not do that because it will lead to nowhere. And, but there is an eyeball leak, which was very popular. So I don't have much time to show you everything, so that's all for this. And not only football, but we want to do a rescue, so we made a rescue leak immediately after that there was the 9-11 and the RoboCup rescue team was sent and a Florida University team went to the site to use the RoboCup rescue robots. Rescue operation was held for three weeks. It's 200 hours in total for the video. This is the entry point. This is the space available, and the robots would enter to see what is inside. This is not autonomous, because the radio wave was interrupted. So robots were maintained, and it has moved with a remote controller. There is no AI, but AI went in to search. This is under Tower 1 to see whether there is anyone remaining. This is the onboard video from the robots. So this is one result of application of a RoboCup. And besides rescue robots, we made a league for home robotics, and we did the selection of a standard machine. And with Toyota, 
uh, Pepper was selected as the standard machine. This is Toyota's standard machine. And next year, they will start a console to see how this could be used for home. And if this is selected, all research in the world will be referring to this. There are different uh, leagues. Another are the smaller robots with wheels. It's very fast. The, it is much faster than remotely controlled by humans, and you can see how fast they move. And by manufacturing robots and technologies developing, what will happen in around year 2000 to 2005, Cornell University won consecutively the games. They made a company called Kiva Systems. And this robot was used for warehouse management. What they did, this is a video from YouTube. This is a robot, not football but autonomous robots were used. They make judgment by themselves at a picking station to, to transport to the place where they would be packaged. This is quite centrally controlled uh, in the past, but this is distributed. So it is possible just to increase the number of robots to expand. Seven, this was purchased by 770 million by Amazon, and the name now is Amazon Robots. But picking is made manually, so Amazon is making Amazon Picking Challenge RoboCup to automate the picking level, and they have a console for picking. This is a picture of this year, but it's still very slow. Delft University won the championship, but it's still very slow, much slower than humans. And I wonder what would happen, as you can see. It just uh, picks up in this way. But this is the first picking challenge. But you can remember the first RoboCup that at the first it was very small. So I think in five years, picking will get much faster. So technology is developed in this way. And by doing this, so uh, warehousing could be developed, then outside the warehouse, it may be possible to promote logistics outside. So besides uh, RoboCops, what will happen if robots are used in the cities? I was talking with uh, Mr. Ito to uh, talk something about automatic driving. Google or Uber, other places are trying, but also this is done in Japan. This is a national project that I did 20 years ago. I developed a company. The president is, is Mr. Taniguchi, and which is quite well known. And that company, DNA, has a joint venture, and they developed a company called Robot Taxi. And the Fujisawa City this is the first uh, taxi service in the world to transport ordinary public. I don't have time to show you everything. But I hope I can control the video. So let us take a look at the video. It takes about one minute. This is the robot taxi. So 
you mu you must ride on it, and you must. This is the only way that you can demonstrate a, a people. A, a, there's a percent of steering to show, but the path is a level, is an area that is predetermined. You are not yet free to drive wherever you want. This is a demonstration test, and now there is another demonstration test planned in a different place. And if you look at the web page of this company, there is logistics robots, warehouse robots, and to integrate the city with robots and drones. So if this robot would go from the warehouse into the city and there are drones, AI robotics would be considered from the perspective of expansion of cities. Then from there, expansion of humans, let me talk about it. And one example, uh, and Mr. Endo is a, a researcher of prosthetics. He is graduate from Media Lab of MIT, MIT Media Lab. He's now working with Sony. A robot prosthetic leg was developed. And also he made a prosthetic leg for the Paralympic Games. And currently at Rio, the bronze medalist of a 400 meters relay, uh, Mr. Sato, uh, he made this leg for that person, and he was successful in winning the bronze medal. And his target is to use his prosthetic legs at the Tokyo Paralympic Games to win the gold medal. Then that memory will exceed the Olympics, and the purpose is to uh, go beyond the handicap and show that technology can develop human ability and give a different meaning. And please listen to the music. Two weeks ago, at the Sony Computer Science Lab, the Paris Lab uh, posted this music on the YouTube. This sounds like Beatles, but this was composed by AI. So this is not possible. An example of a prosthetic leg is a robot to expand the physical ability and make it intelligent. But now, the creativity of humans could be replaced by AIs, or AIs could make things creative. This is what this is indicating, and this is one example. And the third point I'd like to say, which a research I'm doing, is scientific discovery to make AIs do scientific recovery. The target is by 2050 to develop AI systems that can make scientific discoveries that AIs will be able to get a Nobel Prize. It's better to have big targets. There are many papers written about it, so please access that later. But the problem is that Nobel Prize is given to humans, so uh, AIs may not, be able, may not be qualified for a Nobel Prize. So we are thinking of Nobel Turing challenge. Turing test is whether you can distinguish computers and humans. So if you want to give a Nobel Prize, is that given to a human or an AI? If it is not possible to distinguish, that may be very good. There is a French uh, mathematician named Budubagi, but people thought that it was a human, but that was a combination of, of computers and the inventors of blockchain. That may really exist, but we don't know who is that. And everyone believes that AI are not possible to do that, so people think it is human. But if AI start making discoveries, we don't know how we can distinguish discoveries made by humans and AIs. Then, scientific discovery currently is that the pre-industrial 
industrial revolution level. How to do scientific discovery? Serendipity is necessary or by accident or by scientific intuition. But it is up to your luck. But there must be a more rational and systematic method of making scientific discoveries. And in that sense, we may not necessarily be good at making scientific discoveries. For example, in terms of the number of papers, biomedical sector, 1.5 million papers are issued every year, 4,100 per year. You cannot read. You, uh, there are dozens or hundreds only in your area of expertise. How to cover all these? We collect all these papers, uh, like interaction among uh, molecules. Then this is how it looks like. This is for uh, immunology, and this is for Alzheimer pathway. You must read thousands of papers about yeast or yeast signaling. About two thousands of papers is necessary. Uh, it's too much paper to read and cover by yourself. It is voluminous, and there is a lot of new knowledge. Uh, how to uh, sort out all this? No one is doing that, and we must do something about it. And how is that made? Papers are written uh, using post-its. A very elementary method is used. And if you look at the papers on science, it looks very theoretical. But that is the actual situation. When you make an experiment, how are the laboratories looking at You use post-its. This is how labs are made. There are mass spectrometry and other machines, but ultimately the work is done in a manual manner. And you must change the situation. So at the same time, as you can just look at the thesis and then to understand the data, and they are going to be a big problem. That is a human cognitive bias. And usually, there is a bias when you look at something. So the human being have a certain bias. So just some of the recognition is going to be not fair. Because the people using the, um, the language, so that means Alfred Kosovisky and the science and, and saint sanity and then usually and the women fire and the dangerous and things are going to be represent um, um, by this so that's uh, mr george uh, dr george lakoff uh, has mentioned and then probably the same thing so usually use their brain that is the um for the language is the basis of the communication however just uh, a recognition of the world and then for the present situation uh, is biased so when you're going to do that there are quite a few things to do something very um, like a simple so that is a deep clinical and um, phenot phenotyping so that means they're going to have um, like a pathologies and so on that they are going to just and um, have um, some analysis of this as you can see there's a rheumatism on the patient and there are quite a few on way or the uh, symptoms however if they have a uh, machine learning and some of the classification never known before so it's outliers or the data is wrong or it's the new subgroups and then they are going to get some of the discovery here so the things um, cannot be seen by the human being can be seen so this um, the, uh, like a research is going to make a very big um, in that impact however we have to plan everything and and the verification have to be done so we have to be more holistic, holistic approach so to get the like a thesis like 99 percent of reports indicate a a activates b and one percent of report indicate a inhibits b so we have to think about it so most of the them are like oversight is not nothing related to do think but it's not however the problem is the hum, human cognitive limitations And from the scientific discovery, what we can do, and why can we do this? For the massing uh, research and verification of a uh, hypothesis, and then space. So ego or the um, some chess or Japanese chess world, they have gigantic uh, calculation and computation, and then have a big system. But it's going to have uh, beyond the comparison uh, machines going to be there. So, anyways, if it's not being and this is replaced by the uh, science. However, it's going to create something like this. So in the past, there is the, uh, like a machine 
for autonomous driving and also eco, and then those are the ones um, that are going to uh, uh, be analyzed. But however, this is going to create itself. So that means and for qualitatively, quantitatively, it's something different. So they are using bones and then for stones, the ones for an AI is very excited to think about it, to use it and to just create the knowledge. So that means like um, AI and I have to create the uh, knowledge. So in this case, we are going to pursue for that later. So that kind of the world is going to be there. So evolution is going to be um, very advanced. And then also the wonder understanding and then some of the knowledge which is evol evolved by and the and machine. They may have some of the uh, subdivision. So uh, like it's a big an outline of this as a knowledge. And I think it's going to have an interesting future. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.